All right, in today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to do the altar replacement. Um, this is a 5.3, same thing as a 4.8. Now, I did do this video before, but um, that video was not a really great video just because the video I made, I was such in a really big rush on that and I had a few minutes to do the job and then so forth. <gasps> wow, cool. And so um, I thought I might've redo the video. Say hi, Penny. Hi. So I thought I might do the re redo the video on it and um, have a better setup. So the video that I did do it on is with the car that it had a fan clutch. It's pretty much going to be the same setup, but this one actually I have more space. So you would need a stubby, um, a little stubby socket, whatever. Um, I think it was going to be like pretty much a 15 millimeter and a 10 millimeter and and an eight millimeter that's all you're gonna need um and a hammer um and a pry bar so those are the only few things that you're gonna need so very simple process now the guys that have the fan clutch um i would use a wrench for this little scenario so very simple process it should take about less than 15 minutes r and r probably the one the hardest thing that's going to be in this job is these little pins right here um they're like a self like adjusting lock pins um and those become a little tedious on on times but um if you haven't already give it a thumbs up comment down below if you have any questions and hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future and we're going to go ahead and start this video right after the intro So first thing what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and disconnect the negative battery terminal. Um, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and just start off with the job. But disconnect the neg negative battery terminal. This is an 8 millimeter. If this is way too stripped out, then you can actually get some pliers and then grab it right here. But you need to make sure when you tighten this guy back down that these guys aren't loose. So I'm going to go right back here disconnect the actual 10 millimeter i know some of you guys are going to give me crap for this but i'm not going to touch any grounds and i know because i've done this a lot of times so i'm already used to this so once i take this out just so you know i'm just going to cover this guy right back up and that's literally it and we'll just kind of have it hang around on the wire or somewhere I'll probably just put it right here but just like that so I know that wire is gonna be just like that it's not gonna be in my way so all right some of you guys might give me crap for that go ahead feel free I don't care uh. all right so next thing what we're gonna go ahead and do um, if you do have the fan clutch it might be easier for you to actually take off the intake um so that will either be an eight millimeter or a flathead screwdriver and what you can do is you can either take it off pull it back and then right here if you can get something wedged in between here and then separate this from the actual like intake and then you can just kind of lift this guy right over and then move it over to the side so you can actually get your wrench out if you have two ratcheting wrenches then i mean you can just probably use one just to it'll hold itself right up here so you kind of I'll show you what I mean. So you're going to need a 15 millimeter for this. So right here, we're going to go ahead and release the tension. I like to take it off the smooth pulley. And then we'll just kind of, you see how right there, it, it pretty much stops. And then at least with the swivel, I can just kind of move it out the way and so forth. So, all right. So next step, what we're going to go ahead and do, just get your belt. Oh, check out your belt diagram. Um, this is the only one, everything's still on there. And I'm going to keep it still on there. So this is how it would look. Just like that. But we're going to go ahead and just sit this probably right over just like that. So we don't have to move anything all over the place. All right. So next thing what we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to go ahead and disconnect our little connector right here. So we're going to push down as you're pushing this clip and then pull right back up. And we'll just let this hang out from the side. Now, if you want to tell the difference in between a 105 amp and a 135 amp, um, basically the the one with the spacer 
has more amperage in it um the one with that that doesn't have the spacer which would be this black piece so if it doesn't have this black piece right here that's the 105 amp or it's the, usually the smaller amp i think they actually gave me an option now for 160 amperage so which is actually pretty good on that sense um just so you have a heads up i know i remember last the other guy asked me in the other video all right so next up we're going to go ahead and take off these 15 millimeters there's going to be two right here These bolts are both the same length and size, so pretty much that's it. They look about, what, about almost four inches long, so just in case we do lose them. All right, so next, you are gonna need a little pry bar, so if you can kind of get something wedged in there or something. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go from the back of the casing, just kind of tap it, Use your pry bar and then you go from the, the other side too as well. And then you kind of tap this side too as well. So let's just go ahead and get this wobble. The cover might be in the way and if it is, um, just kind of let it wobble. And at the same time, we'll just kind of let it walk towards this way. If you do need to take it off, if you feel like it's in the way, there's actually an eight millimeter bolt that's right here. You take that off. Um, so we have this guy off now. All right, so um, you are gonna need a hammer for this. So right here, um, we're gonna have to go ahead and push these guys right out. So if not, uh, if you don't feel comfortable hitting it, um, what you can try to do is you can try to put like a socket in here and try to like do a pry bar. I would say hitting it with the hammer would be the best way. So right here, I got a three pound hammer. Now I'm not hitting right here. I'm actually hitting on the actual the self-locking spacer, I guess you would call it. So just gonna get a couple taps. And that's pretty much it. And then we're just gonna repeat the same thing for the other one. So, and then that'll make sure that our new alternator goes in pretty smoothly. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and drop in our alternator and you see how much easy that went in. Then you're gonna go ahead and get both of your bolts. And I'll just kind of wiggle one in. I'm, I haven't started a thread yet, so we're just gonna kind of wiggle it. All right, cool. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually start my thread and I'm gonna kind of wiggle the back up and down until I start catching thread in the back. So all right, so we're gonna do the same thing for this one until we start catching thread in the back. And then we're gonna go ahead and tighten it down. Foot pounds, I don't know, but um, yeah, I really don't know. <laughs> but I mean, you can get a pretty good feel for where to stop at the, at the feel for it. So I wanna say probably maybe um, since the moment that like it stopped with the electric ratchet, kinda just did a little quarter turn. Um, but yeah, I don't know the exact torque specs. So I already connected this connector and then what I'm gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna go ahead and get our little wire. Now and obviously mine's still hot. Now the reason why I didn't disconnect this too, we have a check engine light and I gotta still figure out that code for the check engine light. So um, that is another thing too. I know this wire is a little bit overstretched so I am fully aware of that. Um, so. I know. Now, when tightening this down, you don't need to over torque this because if you do, then you'll break the actual whole thing. The actual like unit piece where it actually goes down right here. I've seen a lot of people do that. And that. So just kind of bend it in just a little bit just to give it a little bit more slack. That should be good. I think right there is actually better. Yeah, right there. All right, cool. Now, time to put in our belt. Now, when putting in our belt, let's make sure we still, when putting it over the alternator, make sure that the belt is not sitting over this bolt because I mean, it will sit in like that. And you'll have a hard time trying to put it on. So, make sure everything's all fine. Like. 
we are golden. We're going to go in a clockwise. Oh, I got the belt off a little bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and fix that. All right. Cool. So we got that going and that's pretty much it. Go ahead and start the car and so forth. Um, if this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions and hit that subscribe button for more coming videos in the future. And thanks for watching.